Morning pizza. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. <laughs> You ready to ride bikes? You ready to ride bikes on this beautiful Monday through Wyoming? Let's hope the winds are with us. It is going to be a beautiful day of riding. Going out into the middle of nowhere. I think we're gonna find some cool, weird stuff out there. I'm excited, I'm excited to get desert crazy. It's gonna be desert crazy and it's gonna be desert crazy hot. I think like 99 is in the forecast. We are leaving civilization for about 100 miles. Everybody in town is like, oh boy, have fun on this stretch of road. There's nothing out here. Allie, why is this a big day? Well, my mom is gonna drive up from Boulder and meet us and she's going to bring vegetables and fresh eggs from her chickens and yeah, camp out with us and cook for us and just do awesome mom things. She's the best. There's not a lot of life out here in the desert, obviously. It's a hard place to live. But we are seeing little pronghorn antelopes running around. You can see their little white butts hopping around and kind of feel like I'm in the African savanna. Hi there. All right, I've been honest about all the beautiful roads. I'll be honest about this road. This road sucks. <laughs> There's lots of traffic, way more than we thought. Our shoulder is pretty big, but still, the cars are flying by at high speed. And uh, yeah, we're just, uh, we're not enjoying this as much as, let's say, the scenic byway along the Salmon River. <laughs> Can we go back to that, please? We are so happy to see a teeny bit of civilization. Google Maps has said there was nothing, so we're psyched. We're almost out of water. Hopefully they have food, fill up our water. Ah, maybe some ice even. Welcome bikers, that's us. That's right. Oh, A&W, nice choice. This is an awesome roadside tavern. There are dollars all over the ceilings. The walls are covered with what looks like probably regulars. Lots of business cards, Elvis Presley's up there. Yeah, there's some serious history in this little bar right here, and I like it. There's also stickers all over the wall, lots and lots of stickers, and you know what that means? It's time to add this one to the wall. I know it's not as tough and as cool as like a Harley sticker, but it'll do the trick. This place has everything we need. Cold drinks, they actually have food. They're making us a grilled cheese and some, what'd you get, bacon fries? I got cheesy bacon fries that are hand cut in house. Yeah. Very excited for that. Yeah. And this is just like one of those just perfectly placed spots where we needed it right now. We were running low on water, we were a little bit tired, we needed a rest, we didn't really have great lunch food packed, so here you go, right here in a place called Highland. Very happy that it's here, and this little dude's playing with his car at the pool table. You psyched? This is quite the little gem of sustenance we found out here in the middle of nowhere. This air conditioning unit keeps that bar nice and cold. It's obviously seen better days, and it looks like it's all frosty. I don't think that's frost, but man, we just walked into like a vortex. We've been riding pretty much by ourselves all day. There's nothing out here, and then we come up on this place. I don't know what you want to call it. A restaurant, bar, hotel. 
home. It's, I'm guessing these people live here. This is fascinating. This is definitely a slice of roadside Americana right here. We don't quite know where we're going today. We're gonna go east on this road. <laughs> Maybe Powder Creek? Powder, Powder River? Powder Creek, Powder River, something like that. She just said, she said, and I quote, Powder River, that's a bunch of my family. They're all rednecks, they're not very nice. The nicest person lives behind the post office. <laughs> just taken a little detour off the highway we saw a sign that said hell's half acre and here it is it's some mini Grand Canyon looking thing and unfortunately there's a fence so you can't really get a great shot of it but it's very impressive it's unlike any of the other surroundings we've seen all day it's like another planet looks like Mars this is one of those places that is pretty hidden. It'd be really easy to just drive right by and never know that it's there. And honestly, who's really gonna stop to see Hell's Half Acre? But, you know, we swung in here um, on our bikes and it's super beautiful. It's a really interesting geological formation. So after hanging out here, we looked at the watch, we're like, wow, it's five o'clock. You know, there's nowhere else to go. So we thought this would be a great place to camp. And now I'm looking at the sky, and it's uh, threatening, to say the least. <laughs> so we're going to stash the bikes under the tree, keep them somewhat waterproof, although they have waterproof bags on them. And we're going to hide, I think, on the other side of that little random shelter and hopefully stay a little bit dry and not get hit by lightning, more importantly. Ah! The rain is coming! Big old Wyoming storm coming our way. We're gonna have to jump this fence here. I think if we hide out on this side of the building, we should be good. Are you excited? Yeah. As long as we don't get nailed. We have, we have like six inches of coverage here. Totally. We're good to go. Here it comes. Come on, Mother Nature! Sky is like good versus evil. That way is good. That way is evil. <laughs> Woo. Allie, I think we dodged a bit of a storm bullet. Storm is seeming to go that way. There's a little bit of moisture in the air, but. Ryan, I think you're right. I think it's gonna miss us. Hooray! <laughs> Although I was looking forward to taking a shower, we have not. There is no body of water near us today. We're gonna to go to bed stinky. Dang it! I call this nature's television. Yeah, that is true. HD, 4K. Dun, 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 dun. There, there Hello! Hello. Hi. So good to see you. How are you doing? Hey, Jack. Hey, Jack. How are you oh, doing? Are you so oh, happy to see you? who is this lovely side. lady? This is my mother. The one and only Doom Goddess, Jan Vermilia Juanita, <laughs> Goddess of Doom Juanita. <laughs> um, and she has driven from afar oh, to Jack's waited bring so us... Oh, long to take a leak. <laughs> <laughs> He's driven from afar to bring us mother love and vegetables. Beets. Beets, mostly. 
<laughs> oh man. She brought us kombuchas. She bought me some cold brew coffee. Mmm, look at that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Um. My mom grows me all my vegetables, um, along with some other people at Stormridge Farm in Lyons, Colorado. I didn't even have to tell my mom to bring kombucha. She's pretty psychic. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long drive. <laughs> I need a beer. <laughs> How happy are you on a scale of one to 10? 18. We've gone from riding in the middle of nowhere uh, all day in the wind oh, to camping at a beautiful location I with Allie's care. mom. This feels really good. Cheers, Cheers. to a beautiful life mm -hmm. and to a beautiful mom <laughs> and food and Wyoming. your mom's food supply, Allie? That is exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> Loading up on toilet paper. Mwah. Oh, Mom, thank you so much for coming out. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you for joining our journey. I love you. I love you, too. Take care of yourself. Well, Take good care of my baby. I will, I promise. And don't you ever make her cry. Oh. How was it to have Mom here? Oh, it's always the best. Moms are the best support. And yeah, she brought all the homegrown veggies and eggs and nourished us and that wonderful mom caring, excited energy. Um, but it's really sad to see her go. It was, you know, she was here for what, like 12 hours and wish that she could bike along with us for a little while, but off she goes in her van. It is a beautiful day to ride a bike. That goes for every day, really. And it was so fun to hang out with Allie's mom. You know, I barely know Allie's mom. I've only met her a couple of times. And every time gets better and better. We are off to Casper, Wyoming. We have and we have a surprise for Allie and Casper. My buddy Jeff at 11 Pine, the guy who created these awesome shorts that we're wearing, texted me and said, hey, I want to do something nice for you guys, specifically Allie. I want to get a really cozy hotel room so she can just kind of relax and take it easy. He said he'd pay for it, and that's what's happening. We're going to Casper, and he's booked us something nice. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm very excited, and Allie has no idea. Look at this. Another lucky penny. Nice. They're everywhere. We are rolling into Casper on this awesome bike path along the river. Allie still doesn't know where we're going. She probably thinks we're camping like usual. I will tell her pretty soon. Ole, 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 ole. Allie, are you wondering what the hell's going on? <laughs> yeah, we're going to Walmart. We're going to Walmart. <laughs> you guessed it. Yes, we're gonna refill on beans. So you might be wondering why we're here, not camping. So the guys at 11 Pine a couple weeks ago said, hey, we wanna do something nice for you guys, and uh, especially for you. And they said, we're gonna get you a nice room. So the guys at 11 Pine <laughs> hooked this up. Thank you, Jeff. Aw, thank you. <laughs> Our room was supposed to have a jacuzzi in the room, by the way. <laughs> in the room. We have the king suite. <laughs> Look at this place. Look at this. Da, da, da. Oh, look at this. There's our hot tub. Yeah, what's up, Casper? We gotta test this place out. Woohoo! Oh, yeah, it's like a waterbed or something. Oh I feel like we have to do those MTV cribs, you know? King size bed, personal jacuzzi, big mirror, picture of elk, buffalo, 
big ass flat screen TV. Stuff we'll never use. Wood paneled fridge. Window with view of water tower. Thank you so much, Jeff, at 11 Pine. These are the shorts that we're wearing on the ride. And he's also my friend. We're calling Jeff to thank him. Do the redo. How's it going? You're on speakerphone with Allie, and we love you! Hi, Jeff! Allie. You are amazing! <laughs> when you came and visited we totally spaced on getting love advice from you like the most important person to get love advice from so here we are what do you have to share with us Ryan and I we're here listening okay well I was I was actually happy in one of your your videos to hear one guy say love is easy yeah uh, because I actually absolutely valid. I think love is easy and I think it's completely beyond our control. So I don't think you can you can like make anything happen except just accept it. You fall in love, you're in love and it's easy and there's no work to it. It's just wonderful. But what you do with that is where I screwed up in my life, right? What you do with love once you you've sort of been given it. You've opened up your heart, you've let someone in and you can try to take that farther. You can just enjoy it for what it is and, and leave it. But what I found is that when I was young, at least, I thought, like, love conquers all, right? If you're in love and it's so passionate and so strong, you can do anything. And I think I realized that that's, that's not valid, that you can fall in love with someone that it's impossible to live with and be happy with. And that's where I think the work comes in work comes in and looking at this love and saying, can I carry this on, right? Can I keep this going? Can it grow? Or is it just something that's going to be this little temporal jewel and it's going to be there and it can't really get much deeper? And, and so that's the big question. You know, do you love someone that you can actually live with and continue to have that love get deeper and grow? And that's I think that's the hard part, evaluating that and doing enough things together so that you can figure that out. And you know each other well enough so you say, yeah, I could, I could live forever with this person. And that's, to me, that's the, the ultimate way to love someone is to be there and know that it can keep going on and on as opposed to being a love that is doomed because you're madly in love but it's an impossible situation. So that's my advice. Look at each other, do things together, and decide if this is a love that can just keep going and growing. Do you, do you really, can you live, can you live with each other? Or is, it, is it possible? Because some things aren't. Right? And once you've made that decision, you've decided for whatever reason that this is someone you can live with, What's your advice for the next step? For, well, for doing a good job of living with that person? All the really trite sort of greeting card things, right? Be nice to each other, be generous, you know, give people space when they need it, give them a lot of help you know, when they need it. Uh, just all the very simple, trite stuff. And, and spending time together is super important, especially in the beginning. I mean, you got to spend enough time with each other so you know the other person. Isn't it wonderful to have someone who, who looks at you and says, Oh my goodness, you're hungry. Let's get something to eat. When you don't even realize you're hungry, right? You know each other really well. And uh, Matt involves doing things doing things that are fun and then doing things that are really difficult, things that are maybe really horrible, just experiencing the world together and being nice to each other. Tender, gentle. What advice would you give Ryan? You know me better than, I mean, most people do. You've known me my entire life. 
including the whole part when I was in your belly. Um, <laughs> so you know me at some very like, you know, you've seen and felt and experienced the core of my being and then, you know, watched and been there as uh, it, it's become more complicated. <laughs> um, what advice would you give to Ryan, knowing me specifically? Well, you go up and down a lot, right? And so you're really, really fun when you're up. So what do you do when you're down, right? I think you just have to accept that. That if you've got a person who has lots of highs and lows, you've got to figure out ways to deal with those lows. Is it a low where you've actually got to step in and be kind and helpful, or is it low when you've got to just say, ah, this person really needs to be alone? And I think that's communication. You know, that's your ability to say, I just need to sit this out and, and go into a dark cave somewhere for a little while. Uh, yeah, that's getting to know each other, right? Stuart used to go hide in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> that just worked out fine for us once we had two bathrooms. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was really beautiful. Oh, you're certainly welcome, darling. So wonderful to have you along on this adventure, and you've always been always been there for me and always been such an incredible support in my life. I'm ever grateful for that. Oh, you're a sweet kid. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> I'm your kid, so. <laughs> All right. I love you, Mom. Okay, I love you very much. And we'll talk. You guys be careful out there on the big road. We will be. We'll wear our seatbelts. Oh, wait, no, I mean. <laughs> no crashies. No crashies, no whammies, none of that bad stuff. <laughs> Love you, Mom.